Hard to believe the White House declared way back in June 2010 that Americans would see the summer of re economic recovery. Remember that? We're still waiting. The latest evidence can be found in the housing market. Existing home sales unexpectedly dropped in April. Here to weigh in, Steve Moore of the Heritage Foundation and Liz Harrington of the Washington Free Beacon. Welcome to you both. Steve, I'll start with you. What happened to the housing recovering, my friend? I thought, I thought we were going great guns here. You know, Jerry, this is just so frustrating, isn't it? I mean, every time you think the economy is going to, you know, turn the corner and we're going to get more rapid growth. And I'll confess, I've been fooled by these kind of dead cat pounces myself in the past. We keep thinking, oh, things are going to get better. And every time it looks like that, we get a report like this that just that just is such a downer. And this has been the pattern now for, as you said, six years since Joe Biden promised the summer of recovery. And, and what we're in right now is a rut. A rut, Jerry, of 2% huh. growth that is not creating the jobs, not creating the incomes that Americans well, well, need. And that's why half of Americans think we're still in a recession. I, okay, we get that, you packed in a lot there, my friend. Yeah. Let's, let's okay. unpack. I want to turn right. to Liz, give her a chance. Look, Liz, we had a bunch of housing initiatives. The president doing all kinds of things to boost home ownership in this country. Pulling away fees from, from, how, from mortgage loans backed by the FHA. All kinds of things done. It's not working. Right. This is just another sign of the housing market not coming back. And as, as, as it relates to the entire economy, we have such slow growth, 0.2% in the first quarter. We have 93 million Americans out of the labor force. These are all signs of policies that have been in place that are not uh, improving the economy. We still have job growth rate that's just keeping up with population. That's not a good sign right, that we're right. in Let, a real I'm trying recovery. To, I'm trying to break this all down and show people definitively, mm -hmm. topic by topic, what's going on here. So, we've talked about housing. We've seen what's going on with housing. It's not encouraging. You have some of the lowest rates in American history, even mm -hmm. now. Uh, yep. There's every opportunity to buy. People are not taking it. Millennials are staying home. They don't have a job, obviously. <laughs> but let's talk about Obamacare. We were supposed to fix health care. That was the president's major initiative. And what has happened? The underinsured have doubled to 31 million. How is this possible? Steve. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. How is it possible? I mean, we passed this $100 billion a year uh, new entitlement that was supposed to solve this problem. Now, look, I actually think that the fact that people are paying a little bit more out of pocket is not a bad thing, personally. I mean, I actually think part of the problem is most Americans are over-insured for health care, and, and having Americans pay more out of pocket, pocket is a way to actually drive down costs. But that certainly wasn't the intention of this bill. And one of the reasons the out-of-pocket costs are rising is because the premiums are so high. You know, it was supposed to be subsidized. It was supposed to be a good deal for people, and a lot of them are turning down Obamacare, especially young people. Absolutely right. It's too expensive. We've even had a woman on this show not get Obamacare, did not get any coverage because it was too expensive for her family. What happened? Her son had a surgery. She had to pay for it herself, and she negotiated a lower fee. Ended up paying less than she would have paid under Obamacare because <laughs> she was able. I mean, wow. it's it's shocking. Liz, to you, health care. This is another failure, I believe, I believe, of this administration. What's gone on? The prices are higher. People are getting less coverage. Well, right. The study that just came out that you mentioned was put out by the Commonwealth Fund, which is a liberal nonprofit that shows that 31 million Americans are still underinsured, which contradicts the major reason why Obamacare was passed. We're going to insure everybody. Yeah. That hasn't happened. The deductibles, as we've seen this re from this report as well, keep going up for people. And the premium increases from their own rate requests from the insurance companies, they're going to go up even more next year. We're looking wow. at upwards of 36 percent in Tennessee, 30 percent in Maryland. The, the, all these promises that prices were going to go down, more people would be insured, they just haven't panned out under the Obamacare law. You know, at the top here, Steve, you mentioned that poll about 60 percent of us believe we're still yeah. in recession. We should, unbelievable. We, we've, I mean, that is astonishing enough because it's what, six years yeah. later now. But, you know, you look at something simple like food stamps, right? 2009, 33 and a half million Americans on food stamps. Today, 45.7. <laughs> Steve, how can this be possible when the recovery has been ongoing for years and years and years?
But you don't understand, Jerry. This is a stimulus to the economy, right? The more people on food stamps, the better, right? You know, we just need more people to get food stamps, and everything will be fine. I mean, I say that jokingly, but there are a lot of uh, Democrats like Nancy Pelosi who actually believe that. Um, there was another report out today uh, that I have not validated, but but it says that there are 100 million Americans, Jerry, now that are getting some form of food assistance from the United States federal government. That's three Americans getting, whether it's, you know, school lunch program or nutrition programs or WIC or food stamps. I mean, that's a big problem when you have 100 million people uh, that basically are depending on taxpayers to put food on their table. And a smaller, smaller if group I, people paying those taxes. Yeah, go right ahead, sure. Liz. Liz. Yeah. If I could validate that report for you, Steve, I actually wrote okay. that up, and it found okay. that yes, we spent a hundred billion dollars. <laughs> yeah. We spent a hundred billion dollars last year across 18 federal programs. The wow. biggest is obviously food stamps, but the total of all Americans working, getting assistance in these 18 programs is 109 million. That is not a good sign of a growing economy. And by the way, I think it's related, Jerry, to why so many, you know, the big mystery is why are so many people out of the workforce when a lot of employers I talk to say they can't find workers. Mm -hmm. I think we connect the dots here. A lot of people are on all these government assistance programs, and they're not going to take a job that pays, you know, 15 or $16 an hour because they can get food stamps, they can get unemployment insurance benefits, they can get disability, they can get public housing. Uh, it's a big problem. We've become a kind of uh, welfare state, entitlement state mentality, and now it's hitting young people because they're not working either. I got I got a teenager at home who should be working. He's on his couch right now. God. That's not our fault though, Steve. <laughs> I, I'm just saying. <laughs> Thank you both for coming okay. on tonight. Great job to both of you. Appreciate your time. Thanks for having me. Thank and Bye. now we